The department of Ardèche is divided into two parts, each with its own individual history, terrain, and cultural heritage. Here in the northern sector, the upper Vivarais, the locals refer to it as Green Ardèche. They point out emphatically that this is because of the lush vegetation found here. In truth, the rain falls almost all year round. However, it hasn't dampened the economy. The regional capital, Annonay, sits at the junction of two rivers, the Cance and the Dôme, midway between the Rhone Valley and the Auvergne. Because of its strategic location, Annonay was founded as a military post. Evidence of its Gallo-Roman heritage can still be seen in several places within the town. In more recent times, it was the pure water of the town's river which attracted craftsmen and became the determining factor in establishing the industrial future of the town. By the 17th century, it had become a thriving industrial center. In the 16th century, the Johanno and Montgolfier brothers built paper mills here, mills that later became the most modern paper manufacturing industries in Europe. All around the town, you'll see traces that leave no doubt as to the identity of Annonay's most famous sons. The Montgolfier brothers' bank signs, paintings, and of course, statues. It was the Montgolfier brothers who made the world's first recorded ascent in a hot air balloon on June the 4th, 1783. When the Montgolfier brothers inherited the family paper mill, they introduced what were at the time very modern techniques, such as the weaving of paper, a method developed by the Dutch. Born in 1745, Etienne, the younger, was the more ambitious of the two, his older brother Joseph being content to follow. In June 1783, taking advantage of the fact that hot air rises, they conducted an experimental flight of an invention they called an aerostat. This was in Annonay's Place de Cordelier, in the presence of the general states of the Vivarais. Their aerostat was about 30 feet in diameter and was made of canvas lined with paper. It was heated by burning straw. Their demonstration was such a success that they were asked to stage a repeat performance in the presence of the royal court at Versailles. This time, a basket was attached to the balloon, and a sheep, a cockerel, and a duck became the world's first air travelers. In recognition of their achievement, the French word for a hot air balloon is a montgolfier. Today, Annonay is one of Europe's major hot air ballooning centers. Piles of burning straw are no longer used to heat the air in the balloons. Today's balloons burn propane, which can safely be stored and carried in metal bottles. With this gas, the temperature at the top of the balloon can reach 130 degrees Celsius. Hot air balloons don't achieve great speed since they travel with the wind, but they can travel long distances. The Atlantic Ocean has been successfully crossed by a hot air balloon, a distance of over 3,000 miles. Meandering through the old cobbled streets and squares, you'll see the wrought iron street lamps and shop signs of old, which give the town its special charm. Annonay is also the focal point for the district's extensive agricultural activities, which include pig farming, cheese production, and potato and chestnut cultivation. The produce from this district is considered to be among the country's best. The surrounding plateau is also an outstanding cattle breeding district, and stock is exported worldwide. On the windswept uplands of northern Ardèche, 
there's something else typically French. This is the Lalboussière farm, a farm with a difference because it's a snail farm. It's home to 100,000 snails, carefully nurtured in dark, damp corners on a diet of cereal and chalk. Here, the small grey snail and the larger Maxima variety are cultivated. Both species are delicious. Farmer Jan Drouet is about to show us how to cook his specialty, escargot saint pere The ingredients are snails, wine, and milk. The initial step is to cook the snails in a first broth with water for three to four minutes. Take them out of the pan and allow them to drain. Then, with a sharp instrument, take the snails out of their shells. Clean them by removing the tail section. Now cook them gently in a second broth with a variety of spices for 20 minutes. When they're ready, pour some dry white wine into a saucepan. Then add the snails. And cook again for three minutes. Now add a little milk to the mixture while it's still warm. Cook for another minute and then pour onto a serving plate. Voila, c'est bon. Tournon on the banks of the Rhone is a typical small French town. And like all French towns, it has a weekly market. Soon after seven in the morning, when the market gets underway, keen housewives and local restaurateurs begin their rounds, selecting the best produce for their table. Stalls in a special section also offer fresh game, poultry, cheese of all kinds, and fish. Chef and restaurant proprietor Marc Jolia is always an early bird. The rich soil and abundant rainfall produce outstanding fruit and vegetables in this district. For this reason, the market at Tournon is particularly popular and draws buyers and sellers from Saint-Félicien and other small towns in the surrounding hills and from the Hermitage district just across the Rhône. Overlooking the busy marketplace is one of the town's most favorite sons, Marc Seguin, a nephew of the Montgolfier brothers. An engineer by profession, he invented the suspension bridge and the tubular boiler and oversaw the construction of France's first railway, which linked Saint-Étienne with Lyon. Marc Choliat discovered a love of cooking late in life, but is making up for lost time. One of his specialities is based on the potato. It was Christopher Columbus who first brought potatoes from the New World to Europe. They didn't really catch on until 1540 when a Franciscan monk arrived from Toledo to plant potatoes in the Ardèche. They soon became a local favorite, and today they're used in a typical local recipe called creek. Marc Jolia uses potatoes as the basis for his crixa. The ingredients are champignons, tomatoes, onions, garlic, olives, and thyme, bay leaves, fresh sorrel, Emmental cheese and local goat's cheese, Mona Lisa new skin potatoes, grated cheese, and basil in olive oil. Now for the recipe. Peel the potatoes, cut them in half, and put them in a bowl of water. Wipe the potatoes and mince or shred them. Add salt and pepper. And mix.
Take a hot frying pan from the fire or stove and add two tablespoons of olive oil. Spread the oil all over the frying pan and place the potatoes in the frying pan to entirely cover the pan. Now press them down with a spoon into a pizza shape. Place onto the fire to cook. Cook both sides. Now cut some garlic into thin slices. Next, cut up an onion. Cut the mushrooms in half and slice them evenly. Now slice the goat's cheese. Place the ingredients on top of the potatoes, tomatoes first, and then the onions. Mushrooms. Spread the garlic slices. The goat's cheese. The herbs and spices. Olives. Sprinkle the basil in the olive oil. And place in the oven for three to four minutes. When cooked, put it on a plate and serve with the local light red Gamay wine. The Rhone River is considered to be France's major waterway. Once as busy as a superhighway, today it's used mainly for recreation. That's where we're going next to take you to see a most unusual sporting event, jousting on the water, when we return to the flavors of France. The Rhone is considered to be France's major river. It has long served as a communications corridor linking northwestern Europe to the Mediterranean. Fed by alpine thaws, the Rhone's currents could be dangerously swift and its levels unpredictable. Today, it's broken by the construction of 18 dams, 13 power stations and numerous locks, and is crossed by many major roads and rail bridges. Still today, in many sections, it's used extensively, most particularly by pleasure craft and for recreation in the stretch of river between Vienne and Montélimar. 
one of the prettiest parts of the river is considered to be at Tourneau. The pride of the town is still the suspension bridge, the world's first built by Marc Seguin in 1825. The Rhone has always been of great importance to all the riverside towns, and Tournon's 14th century castle, perched on a hill above the town and the river, houses the Museum of the Rhone. The exhibits include the history of navigation and trade on the river. Of course, it's not just life on the river that's changed. The trains probably aren't quite the way Marc Seguin would have remembered them either. A more representative example of the Vivaray railway is still on display. One of the more unusual sports you may see on the river is water jousting, an aquatic version of the more traditional horseback jousting popular in the Middle Ages. The contest pits two adversaries riding at the stern of a boat. As in the horseback version, each holds a long lance and a shield. The object of the contest is simple. As the boats pass, each tries to tip the other into the water. Two tournaments are organized each year in the village of Serrières, and this year the French Water Jousting Championships attracted more than 5,000 people. The former residence of the senator of the Ardèche has been transformed into the La Musardière guest hotel. It's a sumptuously decorated retreat from the pressures of the outside world with period furniture, fine works of art, and the cuisine of master chef Stéphane Dubois. Stéphane is delighted to show us how to prepare cayette meatballs and chestnuts. First, choose fresh pork livers and meat some cooked chestnuts, pork stomach, peeled potatoes, red bell peppers, parsley, butter. Cook and chop the spinach. Mix with chopped chestnuts. Now mince the meat, not too finely. Add the meat to the spinach mixture. Mixing them well together. Chop the garlic and add it to the mixture. Combine. Now prepare the pork stomach and spoon the mixture onto it. Wrap the stomach tightly around the mixture. And place it in a saucepan. Add a little butter and pepper. And cook it in the oven. For the sauce, pour in another pan some meat stock and red wine. Mix and reduce. and then decorate the plate with parsley and red peppers on salad leaves. Voila! The tiny mountain village of La Louvesque has its own saint, Saint Jean-Francois Régis. He was a 17th century Jesuit priest whose mission was to convert America, but he devoted his life to the poor of the district and became a living legend. For seven years, he roamed a province torn by religious wars until in 1640, he finally died of exhaustion in La Louvesque. His name was carried by other Jesuit missionaries who told the trappers and the Indians tales of his holiness.
like all the French, the Vivarais enjoy their patisseries. A local specialty is the pogne, a large sweetened brioche baked with a fruit topping, traditionally cherry. The Ardèche is particularly famous for its marron glacé, crystallized sweet chestnuts. Marron glacé are the essential ingredient in a local cake, the Ardèchois. This is a specialty of Norbert Chenevier, awarded the title of France's best pâtissier. To make Ardèchois, we need marron glacé, flour, eggs, chestnut puree, cream, gelatin, rum syrup, one Genoise sponge cake, two strips of sponge with a brushed chocolate pattern. Separate the egg yolks and the whites. Add the sugar syrup mix to the yolks and mix. Then take a cake tin and place the strips of sponge around the inside of the tin. Pick up the sponge cake and cut it in half. You place one half in the tin and brush the rum syrup on the cake and the sides. Next, beat the egg mixture, then the chestnut puree. Add the chestnut cream, whisk the mixture, and pour the egg mixture into the beater. Melt the gelatin in water, pour in the chestnut mixture and mix again. Now stop the beater and add the egg mixture to the chestnut mixture and mix some more. Meanwhile, you beat the cream in the beater and add it to the chestnut mixture. Spread the mixture on the sponge Cut the crystallized chestnuts into pieces and spread them on top of the mixture. Now fill up the tin with chestnut mixture. Cover with the other half of the sponge. Brush with more rum syrup. Spread the chestnut mixture on the top. Then a liberal application of sugar syrup. And Seal with a flame if possible. Remove the tin and decorate with crystallized chestnuts, chestnut cream and candied leaves. Norbert Chenevier's Ardéchois is ready to serve. Although Green Ardèche remains a predominantly rural department, today it has many thriving industries which contribute to the buoyancy of the local economy and to the prosperity of its people.